Uh, hello everyone, my name is Rick Pasek, Fly Fish Fanatic. Welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today a uh, really old, well, really old, <laughs> an older pattern, uh, Bob Clouser's pattern, uh, it's a Clouser minnow. Um, this uh, will be one that uh, I've used um, tropical and I've used for like big Girards, big rainbows and like uh, like big lakes, like uh, Arrow Lakes and and uh, the Shushwap and things like that. Um, I've done uh, quite well with this one. Um, it's it. I mean, it's it, it's just another Clouser minnow, really. But uh, it's uh, just uh, just got a couple my version twists, if you want to call it that. But uh, let's get it going. So, so I'm gonna start off in the vise with a Mustad C70S D size four. If you can see that big game. Uh, I'm gonna be using some um, B chain eyes. I don't want this one too too heavy. Um, if you want it heavier, if you're fishing deeper, you can use some uh, hourglass eyes, but I like bead chain eyes. Uh, I'm going to be using some uh, white craft fur, dark green or Kelly green craft fur, and then some peacock sword. I'm just going to use these longer fibers on the peacock sword here. And that's it. And uh, Zemperfly Nano Silk in black. I tie it in black and in white um, with the, the thread. So let's just get this started. It's like I said, it's just a, it's a Clouser minnow. It's just uh, my version. That's all. So more than anything, this just shows people that don't know how to tie a Clouser, how to tie it. So it's not a, uh, not a new invention. So I'm going to come back about, about two eyes of the hook. I'm gonna attach my bead chain. I could come back just a little bit more, but again, a, a, a real traditional clouser, it would be back about here, about ha almost halfway back on a traditional clouser. But I want this one, this one I use a lot, uh, like this for um, more for beaches and stuff, like beach fishing. Um, and I want this one to undulate. Right, so um, if you have it further forward, it'll undulate more. So. Okay, so now I'm just gonna give this a bit of a, uh, just a layer of thread. Oh yeah, I did forget. I put in, um, where is it on this one? Um, I do put in some, uh, either some silver or some, uh, um, or some cream colored or something like that underbody. In this case, I'm going to go with silver. It doesn't get seen a lot, but it as this fly pulsates, you will see it. So um, you don't even have to do it. The last one I, last few I tied, I didn't even put an underbody in. Um, so it's it's totally up to you if you want to or not. Um, again, traditionally it was just the bare hook underneath. So just tie that in, nip that off, and then I'm going to tie in my white. So my white, like I said, this is just uh, like a craft fur. I, I don't want too, too much. I want this pattern to be sparse-ish. So I'm just going to, and I don't want this one too crazy long either. So now I make sure I really wax up my thread here. And then I'm going to come in front of the eyes. And I'm just going to pull these, this craft fur to make it slightly tapered, a little longer. Okay, and then I'll grab it in the front again and nip those butt sections so they line up. Overhang my eye and then pull it back so it's out of my eye. Got two, three turns in there, and then I'm gonna come right behind that those uh, those uh, bead chains and tie that off and come back in front again. And sometimes exactly what just happened happens because I didn't uh, have it far enough back. So I'll just undo that. It's the beauty of fly tying; you can always adjust, right? So. I'm just gonna... Now you 
you want to make sure that your your longer fibers are up on top right so again have this going past tie it down three four five times and then pull it back so it's out of the eye and then go in front and then come back again and then just make sure that's tied down really well okay so there is the white then I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to take the green and I do about the same amount maybe a tad less and go for my length is going to be about there so I can just nip off just ever so little and this has already got a nice little tapered point to it so um, this one here I'm just going to kind of grab this in my fingers and go have that hook point go between my fingers pull it back so it's out of that eye and then just tie this in right there you're not going to go behind the eyes with this one you're just right on top okay then what I like to do is take it out and just adjust that green so half is on each side okay then take some peacock sword three or four five pieces depending on how thick they are this is this one here is pretty fine so i'm going to go with like five because these are really fine and i want to measure my length about the same length as the green so about there repeat that process that you did with the green just get that hook point between your fingers what I mean by that I'll show you between my I've I'm between my thumb and forefinger from the back is where that hook point is going and that way I can lay that in there nicely just make sure that's tied down really well and then I'm gonna do a whip finish now if you wanted to you could put a couple of pieces of flash in here uh, a couple of pieces of uh, like maybe a, a pearlized flash or um, even a red or something um, but it depends like in this one I would probably put either a couple of pieces of pearl or maybe a piece one piece of green down either side but that's it um, the color in this uh, peacock um, sword really pops so cut that off I'm gonna take it out I'm just gonna show you guys so now that's laying on the top so this is going to be in the water like this and it's going to show a little bit of that uh, dark back right of the minnow so when that's wet it's got that dark back just a few now i could have put a couple more in but i don't like a lot of them i like these fairly sparse so i'm just going to put this back in and i do time longer here's one that's a little longer right and then I do tie them a little shorter too. I tie some that are only about that long. So it all depends on uh, on the water you're fishing and what you want. But this this um, craft for really it moves a lot. So you're just pulling out a couple of those loose ones, but it really moves and it just creates a lot of a lot of movement and it, na very natural looking. So righty, and like I said, I've caught lots of rainbows, lots of. Uh, uh, um, a tiger trout, uh, but lot, especially big, large rainbows, Gerards, and and, and uh, fish that are chasing uh, uh, minnows and fry and stuff like that, like in the Shishwap and the mouth of the Thompson, that kind of stuff. These are absolutely deadly, um, and I really like this white Kelly green, and I like the white red, uh, white blue as well. So, okay, hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you subscribed, thank you. If you have not, please consider doing so. I uh, do a couple of videos a week. I do salmon, steelhead, trout, dry flies, nymphs, uh, uh, emergers. I do uh, tropical patterns. I do pretty well everything. So, um, yeah. And uh, I'll be, I'm going to start doing some of these uh, YouTube shorts as well in a little bit here. Um, I've already kind of started, but got to get into that groove. But, um, yeah, just uh, if, you, if, you, if you like it, keep coming back. Make sure you hit that notification bell. And see you guys on the next time video. Time everyone.